want to join us, stand up and sing with us. Uh, if you don't want to stand, that's fine too. If you want to walk up and down the aisle, that's okay with me. thank you for this time where we can come and worship you in song, in our spirits, in our physical bodies. We thank you for this time where we can be together as a family. And I just pray that you'd be honored and glorified here today. In Christ's name, amen. amen. <laughs>
and thank you that we're all here together to worship you and we just love you and we know you love us and we need you so lord in your son's name we pray amen i think it's time we can greet each other say hi
Good morning, church. You all take your seats. We'll get started. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. God is good. I want to start out with a word of prayer this morning. Father, I, you know I can't do this on my own, Father, so I just ask you to be here with me, Father. Send the Holy Spirit, uh, not only to be with me, but each and every one that's here today. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be here and to preach your word. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wondered why we as Christians, why we support Christian ministries? Well, first of all, it's biblical. The Bible tells us to do so. But I want us to look today at the church of, in Philippians. Paul, Paul started the church in Philippi. And overall, it was a poor church. However, there was, there was Paul's first convert. Does anybody know who that would be? Her name was Lydia. Lydia, she was, she was a uh, wealthy business lady. The book of Philippians, it, it blends deep theology and practicality. I believe that it, it was a practical church. But the letter in Philippians, it, it declares the joys of knowing Jesus. And there is joy in knowing him. For me, he's, he's done a big change in my life. The Philippian church, it, it portrays a church that has a generous spirit. And I think it's a, a church that it should portray all of the churches and us as Christian people. We, we as Christians, we need to learn to be generous. And that doesn't always come easy. And I know, speaking from myself, I wasn't generous in my younger years. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has a way of working on us. And he doesn't grab us and shake us. But he works like a gentleman. He gets things across to us. But Paul shows us this kind of, of uh, life of being a Christian involves a generous spirit. So I want to look at this passage today because I trust that it will help us with our giving. Help us to think more biblically about how we give. And I, and, I hope, and, and I trust it will help us continue to pursue the kind of generosity that, that marked the Philippian church. My first point today is giving is compassionate. And I ask Tammy to read our first scripture. There you are. Philippians 4, verses 14 to 15. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into my partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Thanks, Tammy. You know, Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians when he was in prison. And I like to call, and I like to encourage people. I'm on staff here at the church now. But I feel that the best way to encourage a person is, is through God's word. See, uh, God's word says that it's life and health to all of our flesh. So there's something about God's word that is powerful, that has a way of, of changing us. Paul suffered through his ministry a lot, um, being in prison and, and writing, writing letters to encourage. I think to myself, when I call somebody, I think, man, how did Paul do that? 
You know, it's hard enough alone just to encourage a person because we have so many things pulling us down in this world, I believe. But we, need, we all need Jesus in our lives. And we need to make him an important part. God's servants are not immune to suffering. Maybe you know of a pastor or a church or someone in your life that is having trouble. But I believe that with our finances that we can help and we can give some relief to ministries and the church. If a person, if a person never knows Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, their life is gonna end in tragedy. You know, there's a lot of health issues going on. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go lay hands on them and pray for them. Because the Bible says in Mark 16, 15 that to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But the Lord says, Marlon, first and foremost, really, are they saved? Do they know you as their personal Lord and Savior? That's really the important thing. Of course, I believe God wants us all to be healthy. He says in 3 John 2, he says, I wish above all things that you'd be in good health and that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. And how does our soul prosper? The only way our souls are going to prosper is by putting God's word in. So we, can't, we cannot neglect soul care. Giving is, is not simply a way to support Christian ministries. Giving makes you a part of a ministry. You know, when we give, we don't just give. We give a part of ourselves, and we're kind of like we're partnering with that ministry. And we need to remember that, that we're a part of what goes on. My second point today is God loves a cheerful giver. And I ask Wayne to read this scripture for me. <laughs> you know you're going to get a little entertainment today too, huh? You dance too? Wow. Is this is 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each man, should, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, Wayne said to me, when I asked him about reading the scripture, he said, uh, what, uh, do you think that I'm not a cheerful giver? <laughs> and I said, no, Wayne, I don't, I don't think that at all. But, you know, I can remember back in my younger years, it'd be like, it was, it was a struggle. I can't say that I give with a cheerful heart. And I think that if we don't give that way, I don't think God's going to bless us. I believe we get blessed for giving. You know, the, the Bible says we reap what we sow. If we're sowing into ministries, we're sowing into a church, we're, we're a part of it, and I believe God will bless us for it. We must make sure that we're supporting through passion, not duty. You know, it's... It needs to be something that we really want to do, that we care to do. I don't know a whole lot about investing. I know I bought Lucent stock and lost money. I know I've made bad investments, but I know that wise investing and successful investing produces increased returns. When scripture talks about investing our resources in gospel ministry, we see again and again that this is wise because it's abundant and fruitful. Our next scripture I ask Christine. Yeah, got one? Okay. All right, so Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then the second verse is Proverbs 19:17, 
Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Thanks, Christine. I'm not going to ask you to do too much today, but I, I do want to ask you to, to turn to your neighbor and ask, how do you think the Lord is going to repay me? How do you think the Lord's going to repay you? He says that he'll, he says that he'll repay us. The Bible says to seek first, to seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things will be added unto us. Now, I'm not sure what all these other things are going to be that are, that are going to be added unto us, but I think just for a few, I think it's going to be love, maybe joy, peace. Uh, well, I'm reading a scripture here that the Lord asks us to not, do not test the Lord when you are in the desert. See, now but here, he asks to test him. I'm going to read Malachi 3.10. Okay, it's not there, but it's here. Yeah. Uh, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, you see? And see if you not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you not have room enough to eat. Thanks, Peter. So you see that there is a blessing. And, and this... This is really the only place in the Bible where, where God's telling us to, it's okay to test him. We're not supposed to test him in any other way. But I believe that the correct way is to tithe 10%, and that's first and foremost is to our local church, where we're, where we're being fed spiritually. That's where we should give our first 10%. And then after we pay our bills and after we make sure everything else is taken care of, then we can support ministries. We can do other things. Proverbs 3, 9 says, To honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Now, my illustration today is you know, in my younger years, I, I was good at tithing my 10%, but that rental money, that rental money, I wanted to hang on to it. I didn't want to share that part. But as I, as I grew spiritually, as the Lord worked on me, he showed me that, you know what? Marlon, you're robbing God. You're really robbing God. First fruits means our gross income. My third point is giving is honoring God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It's Matthew 22, 37. To honor God is to hold high, high respect, reverence, and distinction. We honor certain people because they have perceived value and because of their position. For example, the Bible tells us to better take this to my friend Adam. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Thank you. Whoops. 
Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and so that you may prosper in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Deuteronomy 5.16. I want everyone to know today that supporting ministries is just not always financially. There's, there's a lot of ways and things that we can do. Just like this, this fundraiser. I don't know much about making pies, but I know about going to Taiwan. And I know that it takes money, it takes finances to do it. So I asked my, my wife if she'd make a pie. And, and she did. And, and I think the pie thing, congratulations to the winners. <clears throat> Anyway, like Josh Boroff, he, he leads the men's group. And sometimes we need to have passion on people that have ministries. There's been an average of 10 or 12 guys that have been coming. So I, I thought I'd try to do something to help out. So I offer my wife's services once again. <laughs> I asked her if she would make a, a breakfast casserole. And praise the Lord, not only one, but two. So us men ate good. Giving is worship. I have received full payment. This is Philippians 4.18. I received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Paphroditus the gift you sent a fragment offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. That's Philippians 4.18. We don't hear a whole lot about Paphroditus, but he was a missionary and he, uh, he was with Paul and he was appointed by the, by the church in Philippians, or the Philippians church in Philippi. He was appointed to deliver money, the gifts, to Paul to help support him. My last point is giving is safe. Most investing is risky. But I believe that investing in God, investing in ministries, there is no risk. And a lot of times we, we want to hold back because we want to make sure that we have enough money to pay our own bills and do what we need to do. But you know, the Lord, he covered that situation. It's Philippians 4.19. I got this one down. I don't even have to look at my notes. He says that my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He's going to take care of us. We need to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. I want to finish up today uh, the conclusions. I want, to, I want to talk just a minute about my missions trip to Puerto Rico, Taiwan, and Guatemala. Puerto Rico was, was a very nice experience, except for sleeping on the concrete floor. <laughs> that part was a little tough. But it was really a good experience because I, I got to do what I like to do. I like to share the gospel. I like to see people turn their lives to the Lord. So... I started knocking on doors at this 55 plus home and I found out right away that when you don't speak Spanish, you're gonna have some trouble. <laughs> so I went to this other lady earlier that said that she's right with the Lord and, and she said, uh, I'll, I'll be your translator. She said, I'll go along with you. And I don't know how the motorcycle thing got brought up, but <laughs> I used to ride a motorcycle for years. Well, she took a liking to me, I think, a little bit because of that, but her son was killed on a motorcycle. And she, she wanted me to get rid of that motorcycle. But we've seen a lot of people accept Jesus as their Savior. And it was like those people were hungry. They wanted God. They wanted God's Word. They, they wanted salvation. They were looking and they were searching for something. Now, Taiwan, 
Taiwan was a, tr- a tough mission trip for me. It was, it was a very good experience, but it was long days. It was English slash Bible camp. And we, uh, we started, we'd be there at 7.30 in the morning, and these people were bringing, bringing their kids because they believe in Taiwan. If they can speak English, they're going to be in the upper escalon. So it was really important for them to have them kids there. So that was a way of, of getting some Bible into these kids. And we've seen a lot of kids come to the Lord. Guatemala, I thought, was going to be maybe doing a lot of work. But it wasn't so much work. It was, it was, more, it was a variety. We worked a little bit, helped build a house. We did some street ministry. We went to several churches. And some of these churches... I wish I had a picture to show you. I mean, there would be, to get to this church, there'd be a path, like, a, like you'd see a cow path. And, that, and, and we'd be walking in, in circles, going up this mountain because the mountain was steep. And then in the middle of the church service, the rain, it starts pouring down rain. And I'm thinking, you know, I've had both my knees replaced. I'm thinking, boy, I hope I can get down off this mountain. You know, maybe this maybe this mission trips for somebody younger than me, but Lord, you had you got me in this position, so I think you'll take care of me, and He did. Like I said, I'm on staff here at church. I want everybody to know that I'm available. If you're going through something, don't go through it alone. I know Jesus said, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you." But there's people available that want to help you. So don't be afraid to call. If you bow your heads with me. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to be here today. and I just pray, Father, that uh, we can leave um, with a joyful spirit, Father. And just uh, be thankful, Father, that you're the Lord of our lives. And Father... Uh, I just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.